Well, hello people from somewhere in the countryside in County Limerick in the southwest of Ireland, okay? And I'm making my way to a country graveyard. So stay tuned, my friends, to find out what am I doing in County Limerick making my way to a country graveyard. Stay tuned, my friends, stay tuned, okay? Right, people, <clears throat> here I am. I'm at a, a graveyard called Cararelli Graveyard here in the countryside in County Limerick. Now, I'm going to visit the grave of an Irish musician, very famous, very international, part of, a, of an international huge band, right? I'm sure whoever um, follows this band will know exactly who I'm talking about and the name of the band. So let's go into the graveyard here, my friends, and I'll show you this um, grave of this famous Irish uh, rock musician, okay? Right, has anybody guessed yet? Um, so here it is. And it's absolutely full of flowers. Dolores O'Riordan of the Cranberries. Remember the Cranberries? 
they were a huge, huge international band. They were huge in America, in Canada, Australia, Europe. And um, yeah, she died on the 15th of January 2018 in a hotel room in London. Yeah, so this is the resting place of Dolores. What a beautiful place for her to be buried in. It's right out in the middle of nowhere in the country, you know, and um, you know, there's people, like every band, there's people who don't like bands and don't like singers and whatever. I liked her. I thought she was brilliant. I thought the songs they, they she wrote was fantastic. So, yeah. So, I'm it's hard, you know, you know, this is it, like, this, this is where the woman is buried. Um, and do you know when it comes back to, to talking about envy, right? What it is, is that one of the seven deadly sins, right? Well, with Dolores and other people, I would, I would have had envied her life, you know what I mean? I would have said, God, look at her. She's a big international rock star. She's playing all over the world. She now has loads of money she can buy, you know, grand big house and uh, you know jet set all over the place you know what I mean thought she had everything but obviously she hadn't because I think I don't know whether she was married I know she had children but she was definitely separated or divorced anyway and um, then she did go off on a solo career the so her solo album didn't do that did, didn't do as well but I still think she had fantastic songs on her solo albums you know what I mean and um, yeah and she ends up um, dying at 46 years of age. You know what I mean? So, um, a tragedy really because all these great musicians, you know, that are really famous, like, you'd often wonder if they had, if they were still around, they'd still be producing some fantastic music still, if you know what I mean, coming up with these great songs and lyrics to songs and stuff. But, uh, yeah. And the thing about it is, when she started off first in, in the Cranberries, um, <clears throat> she was supposedly she was very shy. She, didn't, she was very, very shy, so she had to learn how to, you know, stand out and be, be the front woman on, on, in, a, in a band on the stage, you know what I mean? So, yeah. But uh, this is where Dolores is buried, my friends, from the Cranberries. Check them out there, people, the Cranberries. What does it say here? Look, there's somebody obviously who met her and um and there's someone from that's, that's that germany or spain and that is I, a day with dolores i dreamed in a what's that happy period of my life you know poetry by w b yates there's uh, somebody from france anyway merci dolores This is the beginning of your day life. It is more complicated than it seems. Always be yourself along the way. Live in the spirit of your dreams to the full. The Lord is over. Here. Yeah, I'm glad now that they came here to see to see her, her grave because uh, I, was, I, I, I would have been a fan of the Cranberries. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, what a peaceful place to be buried, away out in the middle of the country. I don't know if you can hear the cows, there's a dairy farm just here, beside the graveyard. And I can hear all the birds. Oh, just beautiful. It's an amazing, this is what happens to you when you die. You just, one minute you're a jet setter, like, like Dolores was, famous rock star, and you end up in the ground. Anyway, people, I'm, I'm glad I found it. Just go in here to the old part of the graveyard here. Look. Wow. Some mad, some mad big crazy old headstones in here, my friends. Look at this. Ooh.
just after getting stung by nettles. <laughs> right people, so that's the, the burial site of the famous Dolores O'Riordan, rock star of the rock band, the Cranberries. This is where she lies and rests, my friends, in a lovely, peaceful graveyard in County Limerick. Okay, let's move on again, my friends. Right, people, I'm just um, after leaving uh, Dolores O'Riordan's grave there. And I'm, I just seen on a map here, there's a park. Uh, I can't think of the name of it at the minute, but anyway, I'm heading, heading, heading to the park now before it closes, okay? So stay tuned, my friends. I've been heading to this park. I'll put a name up um, or tell you tell you the name of it when I get to it, okay? So stay tuned, my friends. Sit on these mad little country roads down here in County Limerick, okay? I woke up in a king size bed. Took over the clock, a stranger to my left. The neighbors gave me a side eye like I was blind. Oh yeah. Nine to five was my dad's advice. Don't think twice. I want the luxury life. My beauty can lose it. I'll use it. I'll take what I want. Oh yeah. Oh. Go out and investigate Lock Gore Trail. Okay, my friends. So, look what they found here. Look, a wedge tomb, there's a new church, a pigeon house, Grange Stone Circle over there there is a black castle a uh, butcher's castle look bowling island cranock and a lime killing and the spectacles pretty cool area isn't it my friends what do you think Wow, the noise of the boards here. Hi. <laughs> the noise of the boards here. Those gas, right? Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, 
all the younger people, what you see with the GoPro, they know that you're doing YouTube. And they all want to be in it, they all waving their hands, you know. Okay, isn't this beautiful? Look at this. Wow. I don't know if you can see that properly in the GoPro, my friends, but look. Super cool lake. I see a swan out there on the lake already. And see on the big on the hill up there? Full of cows on top of the hill. Wow, this is a super cool place, my friends. Super cool. I love it. <coughs> so this building here was a, a lime killing, right? See it here, look. And I'll just read a little bit about, about uh, what its purpose was for, right? So it's saying here, the boring of lime to create agricultural fertilizer was introduced by Elizabethan settlers in the 16th century. It became widespread with the agricultural improvements of the 18th century, and many kilns cont continued to use in use into the 20th century. Lime was also used to produce building mortar and for whitewashing. This type of kiln is known as a draw kiln, the burning produced quicklime, CAO, which was spread on the land, where it mixed with rainwater to produce calcium hydroxide, or slaked limestone. To make loading the stone into the funnel easier, kilns were often built into sloping ground or a bank like this example, or else a ramp was constructed to the rear. Lime burning was essentially a farming industry one cartload of stone would be a sufficient charge or fill for a kiln. The stone was broken to about three quarters of an inch uh, mesh. The kiln was loaded with alternate layers of fuel and stone. The fire was lit in the evening and for the following two days, constant attendance to stoke the kiln was required, initially with approximately equal proportions of fuel and limestone, and later with fuel alone. This was added down the chimney after 48 hours, the fire was allowed to die and the lime was raked out through the door. So there you go, my friends. A lime killing. Pretty cool. Oh, here's the swan. I wonder, wonder will, he, will she or he come over to say hello to me? Hello, swan. Hello. Are you well? I hope you're well today, my friend. I hope you are. Yeah, come on over and say hello. Yeah, come over and say hello. Okay, I'll leave you alone. I'm just going up here to the visitor centre, my friends. God, I've done a lot of rain here. I missed it today. A lot of showers today, my friends. They're just closing up the, the visitor center there, but um, yeah, it is lovely, isn't it? Get up for a chair, my friends. this tree and it's saying that it's um, a willow right so it's saying the willow is a fast-grown tree native to Ireland Britain Europe and Western Asia the narrow leaves are sharply tapered at both ends and grow up to 10 centimeters long the bark is gray brown with deep fissures it produces very small flowers which turn into upright catkins up to five centimeters long. 
The fruit are small green capsules up to 5 cm long, opening to release fluffy white seeds. It loves damp wet soil and is found along many river banks. The wood is used for making cricket bats. Wow, never knew that my friends, they make cr cricket bats. That's mad. Ah, oh, this is lovely. Loch Gore County Limerick, okay? Southwest of Ireland, my friends, you'll find this place. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. So this is about the black thorn, right? I don't know who names all these um, shrubs and plants and stuff, right? But here's the official name here. The botanical name is Prunus spinosa. Spiny shrub of roadside and hedgerow. Black thorn forms dense scrub cover where it is left untrimmed and ungrazed. It bears dense clusters of small white flowers which contrast with the dark bark of its twigs fairly early in the year. Blackthorn hedges can appear to be covered in white. After the flowers, the small oval leaves appear, and then in autumn, the harvest of sloes develops. These look like small damsons, but are very sour and are not eaten directly by people, although boards take them. Sloes have traditionally been used for flavouring gin or pochine. The use of blackthorn wood is mainly decorative. For example, the manufacture of Shillelagh walking sticks and tourist souvenirs. So that's what you're looking at here, the black thorn. That's prevalent all over Ireland, my friends, the black thorn. I can hear planes flying over here, people, all the time. But it's not Dublin Airport, <laughs> it's Shannon Airport that's very, very close to here. So that's why you can hear, hear them. You can't see them because of the clouds, but they're flying over. Right, so I'm just looking here, whether it's just around where these stones are here. Now, I'm not an arch archaeologist or whatever, right? But just imagine, like, we, if you, what's an information sign here? Most people, like myself, will pass by here and just say, oh, there are stones, right? Just stones, right? But according to this here, the spectacles are so named because of the sitting of a circular hut site adjacent to a circular rock outcrop. This site is an, an unenclosed occupation site of the early medieval period, 400 to 1200 AD, consisting of fields and house sites. It is situated on a natural terrace with rock faces above and below and was excavated by Professor S.P. O'Reardon in 1939. And there was the remains of three houses, A, B and D, were defined by stone footings and post holes and each had a heart. Houses A and B were round in plan while D was square. Structure C was narrow and rectangular with no heart and may have been an animal buyer. House A was 4.5 metres internally and the wall foundations were almost one metre in thickness. Uh, post holes inside and outside the wall suggest that the upper wall was formed by posts with an infill of wattle or mud. The roof may have been supported on timber posts rather than on the walls. There were two hearts, one at the east and one at the north. And there's a diagram of what they found there. You see that? Here. It's an amazing what <laughs> people who, that's their field, their speciality, you know, archeology span and what they can detect from our findings. Amazing my friends, amazing. Luck Gore dominates the scene. 
it was to us a personality loved, but also feared. Every seven years, so it is said, gore demands the heart of a human being. One of the Desmonds, Garrett the Earl, was doomed to gallop once in seven years over the surface of the water and around the lake. He rides on a milk-white horse shod with silver shoes. That's one thing about Ireland, my friends. Well, great for spinning yarns. That's where all the myths and legends came from, you know, all them, the ghost stories and all the myths and Irish myths and legends. Um, I have a, a book at home with all, all, all the the ones that you would have learned in the schools. But uh, with the advent of <coughs> electricity, uh, <coughs> internet now, smartphones, you don't hear any more um, made up stories or ghost stories or whatever, right? Because you know, people are just they're just engrossed in themselves, aren't they? Like on their smartphones and you know, uh, driving out in their cars and going to cinemas and you know, at night time they have electricity at night, so no more ghost stories, my friends. No more myths and legends in the future Ireland, my friends. You can say that's a good thing or a bad thing, but anyway, yeah, well, great at making up yarns, my friends, 100%. Ireland's Stone Age interpreted this interpretive centre, modelled on dwellings of the Neolithic period, 3000 BC, was constructed by Limerick County Council in association with Shannon Side Tourism and Board Fulcher. So there you go, my friends. It's getting a little bit cold here now. And there's a big shower there. It's coming this way, I think. So. I'll head back to the car, I'll see a little hut down here and I might get a cup of tea, if I'm lucky my friends, get a cup of tea. You know yourself, you can't live a whole day without a cup of tea. So you can't. No. Woohoo! <laughs> right people, the, unfortunately the little coffee shop and tea shop is closed so I'm going to have to wait to get to Limerick Town my friends. So listen, um, He didn't. Right people, so that's it from my visit to um, Dolores O'Reardon's grave in a beautiful graveyard in the country and um, yeah um, and out here to this place called Loch Gore, right? So I hope you enjoyed it my friends because I did. That was sad now but out to visit Dolores' grave. Um, yeah, so that's it for now, my friends. I'm going to have to try and make my way back to the hotel I'm going to stay in in Limerick Town uh, tonight. And so stay tuned, my friends. I'll have another one up next Sunday after 5 p.m., right? Pre preferably in Limerick Town or somewhere around there, okay? So press the notification bell to know when the videos are uploaded. They're always up on a Sunday after 5 p.m. And if you like the video, please press the like. And if you're new to the channel, please press subscribe, it's free. Okay, take care, I'll see you again. And watch out for some of the photographs at the end. Okay, bye, take care. See you all, bye.